This is WCM's Park Update, a weekly show covering the outdoor hospitality industry hosted by Ben Quiggle and Mike Gast. During each episode, you'll hear from special guests and campground experts on topics that will help your park flourish. WCM's Park Update is a production of Woodall's Campground Magazine. Hi, I'm Ben Quiggle, editor of Woodall's Campground Magazine, and this is another episode of WCM's Park Update. My esteemed colleague, Mike Gast, is here. Uh, former vice president of communications at Campgrounds of America, and he does some of his own side PR work now, I guess, too. As oh, well. I'm so much more busy than you, Ben. Yeah, yeah, I know. Everybody's busier than me. Um, and then uh, uh, I, I did forget to mention today's show is sponsored by Book Outdoors, and we thank Book Outdoors for sponsoring. And um, our guest today is Maris Brennan, the membership director for the Michigan Association of recreation vehicles and campgrounds and i think it's important to note at the beginning of the episode for people who aren't familiar with michigan i live in michigan maris obviously lives in michigan um mike is a weirdo and lives in nebraska uh yeah. so, so, sorry too nebraska. many mountains in michigan yeah yeah too many mountains and uh um there are two associations in michigan so i just wanted to clarify um, you know, we're, Maris works with MARVAC, which is, uh, as I mentioned, the Michigan Association of Recreation Vehicles and Campgrounds. And then there's also Michigan ARVIC, which has a very similar name. Uh, I think they go by Camp Michigan uh, now, um, but they also represent, both of the associations represent um, campgrounds to some uh, degree. And I know MARVAC also works with RV dealers, um, manufactured homes. Um, I believe, and um, as we were discussing before the show, they used to do, or still do to some degree, work with storage, um, the storage people. Um, so very interesting. You guys have your fingers in a lot of different areas. Um, and uh, we wanted to bring on Maris to talk a little bit about an event that they are doing, um, the first annual um, Campground Vendor Showcase which is actually coincides with their 58th annual Detroit RV and camping show. And it's kind of, it's going to be kind of an interesting event, I guess, Maris, um, maybe just talk a little bit more about Marvac and how you guys came up with this idea to host this vendor showcase, I guess. So Marvac was started in like the 1940s. Yeah. Uh, back when manufactured housing and recreational vehicles were built in the same factory. Um, and as you know, things have progressed and the industries have kind of split, uh, we have also done that. So we now actually have an umbrella association that does both manufactured housing and recreational vehicles and campgrounds. Um, my job is to make the members happy. My job is to create things that are useful to the members uh, so that the benefits that they're getting equal or exceed what they're paying us in member dues. There are a lot of intangible things that trade associations do for their members. The majority of it is watching and um, participating in all of the legislative work that happens in the state that may affect their ability to do business. In order for us to be effective in that, we need, the, the, the association needs the members behind them um, so that what we have to say actually has some merit and some leverage in the legislation. So outside of that work, the more tangible things that we do are member benefit type things. And when I started here at Marvac, uh, I started talking with the members and asking them, what do you need? What is gonna be helpful to you? Where do you need support outside of legislation? And one of the things that they had mentioned was needing to meet and, and understanding the vendor options here in the state of Michigan. Okay, yeah. Um, I guess, how is registration going for this event? Do um, you guys have quite a bit of interest so far on both the vendor and attendee side? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the first one that we've ever done. So it's, it's not going to be like walking into Cedar Point, but it's going to be pretty good. Uh, we have a nice variety of vendors. Um, we have vendors that are looking to help stock camp stores. We have vendors that are looking to pave roads. We have vendors that are looking to help with software issues. Uh, a lot of, of good, diverse quality with all of the vendors that are coming in. And the campgrounds seem to be really excited about it. Uh, our campground registration closes on the 22nd, and we're, we're closing in on 40 to 50 people at this point. So, I mean, that's pretty good for our first year. So where are the vendors coming from, Maris? Are, are they all in state or are they coming from surrounding states too? We have a couple of options for the vendors. We decided that with this being our first year, uh, it's, it's going to be a fairly short day. So the vendors are coming in at noon and they are done at 6.30 in the evening after the vendor showcase and a networking event with the campgrounds. So a lot of the vendors that are physically going to be present at the vendor showcase are Michigan vendors. A lot of them are um, either national vendors that happen to be um, headquartered here in the state of Michigan, or they are small business that are here in the state of Michigan. A lot of the national companies are participating with us as QR vendors. And that's something that's new, I think, to the industry as a whole, but it's really catching on, I think. So what's the biggest yeah, I, owner need out there? Is, is, it, uh, is it software management? Is it, is it physical like the roads? Is it, is it campground development expansion? What are, what are they most interested in? I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the first part of that question. What, uh, what are the owners, uh, the campground owners out there most interested in? Is it, is it all expansion? Is it, is it software development? What's reservation systems? What are, what's their big concern? A lot of those things, software reservation systems tend to be one of the largest, but we get requests all the time for assistance with uh, financing, assistance with insurance, uh, finding transportation, rental companies. Um, you know, they, our members look to us to vet out the vendors so that they know if they are coming to us and asking, who do you recommend for this, that, or the other thing? They know that the people that we are bringing into the association are people that um, have good reputations in the industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess, you know, uh, you, you have, um, I think you introduced a week or two ago, um, Scott Barr from Karn yeah. Consulting, which I know Mike knows very well oh, yeah. um, through his work with KOA. And um, he's coming from his home in Maine um to talk about um factors that are impacting the camping industry and scott's a great presenter i guess um uh i mean that seems like a big win for your first for your first meeting i guess so we are really excited to have him uh one of the things that our we have found that our campgrounds need in particular is help understanding this new brand of camper that's coming out um, yeah you know, COVID changed a lot about the demographics of the people that are coming and camping and the new campers, the new uh, people who are booking with them and coming out, they need different things than, than maybe what they're used to. And so we're hoping that Scott can come in and share, a, I mean, an enormous wealth of knowledge. To well, Scott help is, Scott is a fire, Scott's a fire hose of information. You won't have any problem with that. Uh, <laughs> Maybe talk a little bit about about how the ownership picture has changed in Michigan. Is it is it uh, less mom and pops, more corporate, uh, new investors coming in? Are there just physically more campgrounds than there ever have been? And the interest is that high. You know, we have seen a tremendous growth in the state of Michigan as far as campgrounds are concerned. I would say the majority of our campgrounds are still mom and pop shops. They are small businesses. They are families that are, are working on property that they have belonged to their family for generations and they love it. Uh, but we do also have um, larger companies that have management or 
percentages in campgrounds all over this all over the country. And those are coming in more as high-end RV resorts rather than like what people think of when they think about camping with their kids. What does that do yeah. to your staff in your office when you've got to uh, worry about the concerns of people that might have campgrounds in five or six different states? Well, the nice thing about Mar about Marvac is that we really only work with Michigan law. We only work with Michigan policies and we only work with Michigan travel. So when these companies are coming in and maybe they have places, I know we have one member that has um, a community in Florida, they have a campground in North Carolina, they don't know what's going on in the state of Michigan legislatively. And so it's really important for them to have that listening ear so that when things are coming up that may affect what's going on with their business, they have someone saying, hey, we need to pay attention to this. Do you, so yeah. that, that begs the question, what is going on legislatively <laughs> in Michigan? <laughs> well, you know, right now, a lot of what's going on in Michigan is primarily um, run by Democrats at the moment. Um, they took a full sweep of the, the top spots throughout the Michigan Chamber. So a lot of what they are looking at right now more than anything else is um, issues with clean water. They're looking at issues with um, you know, net nature and keeping things um, generationally strong for our natural resources. So my former boss at, at Campgrounds of America, Toby O'Rourke, spent a lot of time in those first few months of the pandemic talking with governor's offices and finding out that there was a tremendous lack of understanding uh, as to what a campground really was. Have we made progress there in Michigan? We were able to do a couple of different things last year that, or recently that, that I think are worth mentioning. Um, a lot of it is just bringing common sense information to people who maybe don't know about that industry. So, for instance, um, we were struggling with the Secretary of State getting plates on campers on time. People would come to buy their camper, they would have templates, they would go on vacation and they would get ticketed on their way home because they didn't have a plate. And so yeah. we were able to um, work with the Secretary of State, change that law a little bit so that there was a longer period of time before those plates were required for people. And it, it made it so that the Secretary of State could keep up with the demand. So that was one of the big things that we worked on. I know we've also um, worked to get more funding into the branch of the state government that actually oversees a lot of the, the legalities. And, you know, I'm not the best person to talk about that. Don Lilly is our president and CEO, and he is, you want to talk about a firecracker. That man knows legislation. If people want to know what exactly in the, in the minutia is happening, when it's going to happen, why it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen, he's the one that you would want to ask. Yeah. Well, um, uh, We'll uh, take a small break and to recognize our sponsor, Book Outdoors, and then we'll be right back to talk more about the um, vendor showcase you guys are hosting and what else people can expect. So um, we'll be right back. Today's show is sponsored by Book Outdoors. If you want increased visibility and higher occupancy, your campground needs to be listed where today's guests are searching and booking. Book Outdoors is the most sought after destination for booking outdoor accommodations. Listing your property on Book Outdoors is free and easy, and Book Outdoors seamlessly integrates with several popular reservation systems. Register now and get a $25 gift card when your listing is published, plus another $100 to celebrate your first booking. Visit partners.bookoutdoors.com for more information and to get started. Uh, welcome back to WCM's Park Update, and we are chatting about uh, Marvac's upcoming campground vendor showcase with Maris Brennan. And, um, you, you know, as what else is going on? I know we talked a little bit about Scott Barr. He's going to be doing an education session. You guys are obviously going to have um, a, an hour or two where people are going to be doing, be able to walk around and see the vendors. Um, what else are you guys going to be doing during this afternoon, I guess? 
one of my goals was to make this a very interactive event. You know, if, if you've been to trade shows before, a lot of times the vendors are standing in their booth and the people are walking by and nobody really talks to each other unless there's something in particular that someone is going to find out. So my goal in the way that this has been created and, and the way that the staff has made it is to make sure that those campgrounds have reasons to talk to the vendors. So we have vendor quest, which is a uh, question and answer kind of a trivia kind of game that will be going on during the vendor showcase itself, during the time that people get to visit with the vendors. Uh, we have um, Champion, which is our Flatland sponsor, is bringing in a uh, park model home to tour which is gonna be really, really cool. They have made just really great advancements on, on those park model homes. Um, yeah. The show, the RV and campground show that will be opening the next day will be loading in and prepping that day. So uh, there is an opportunity there to do some pre tours of what's going on down there. And during the happy hour event in the afternoon, um, from 5 to 6.30, we'll have um, the doors open so everybody can see what's going on. Uh, John will be doing the legislative updates, so all of the information that I didn't cover because <laughs> legislation is not my best thing, John will cover. Yeah, um, and I get, you know, for people who maybe aren't uh, from Michigan or don't know about the Detroit uh, show. I mean, you guys have been doing that for 58 years now, and it, it's really grown into a pretty big show. That it, Are things looking good for that show this year as well? Is it looking like there's going to be a pretty decent crowd coming to that, that one? show is, is, I would say, arguably the largest one in the state. I don't know, like from a square footage yeah. standpoint, it's pretty close. Um, we have, we'll bring in about, I think the last spring show we did, it was near 400 different RV units from little pop-ups and hand hands all the way up into the really, really high end class A more coaches. There'll be campgrounds there. There will be um, guest speakers. I know Tom and Jim from Under the Radar are planning to be there. They'll be giving a talk and signing books. So there'll be a lot of really fun things happening. Yeah, and I think l the last few years you guys have been bringing in, t you know, ten to twenty thousand. Is that a little too high for no, people? I mean, it was twenty plus last spring, but I I don't know the okay. history there. Yeah, and then you guys also do a fall show, I believe, right? We do. We do two big ones uh, down in down in the Detroit area at the Nove Suburban Showplace. Uh, but then we also do four regional shows, one in Battle Creek, one in Port Storon, one in Flint, and one in Traverse City. Uh, so for the people that, that don't want to travel into the Detroit area and for our members that are more regionally based, that's where they go. And those will run all the whole month of March. So for the upcoming yeah. vendor show, Maris, is that, a, is that a member only as far as the attendees go or anybody can show up? No, nope, anybody can come. Uh, we want to make this state as healthy as we possibly can in the campground industry. So if you're a member of Marvac, it's really cheap for you to come. If you're not a member of Marvac, it's still pretty cheap, but it's not as cheap. If you are a campground that hasn't really decided whether you want to have a membership with us, that's okay. You can come take a look and see what we're about. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, that's okay too. We're okay, well, you're 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 the membership person, so give us your thirty second elevator pitch. <laughs> oh, I love elevator pitches. Thanks for that, Mike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, as a member of Marvac, a lot of what you would get, uh, as we talked about, is legislative work, having someone keeping those small business owners and even the larger corporations aware of what's going on in the state that may affect the way that they do business. For me and the work that I do, my job is to get that information out to the public, like what we're doing today. Um, my job is to help get 
maybe the campground type members and the dealer type members, the manufacturing members, and our, did I say campground? Camp suppliers. Um, get all of them talking so that um, they understand what each other needs. And so we do a lot of networking events. We do a lot of educational events similar to the vendor showcase. Uh, and, and we spend a lot of time promoting, especially our campgrounds. We have collection of rack cards that is very expansive and it comes with me everywhere. Uh, so if you maybe don't have the time or the funding to do these big shows by yourself in a booth, you can come in with others. And there's also the directory, which goes out. I think we print, I haven't looked at this year, but we print about 75,000 of those. And those go into um, the Michigan Welcome Stations. They're going into the state parks this year. They are um, available at all of the vendor shows. And a lot of our dealer and campground members keep them to share because they're great travel magazines. Is there a camper research that the association does too? Um, most of the research that we do is third party. We collect all of that information, but there's only five full-time staff members here. So we don't have time to do a lot of the actual research ourselves. We rely on people like Scott. Well, maybe, uh, maybe Scott can help you with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> he does a lot of research. So, um, uh, I guess, you know, looking ahead to the summer, it, you know, um, are you guys expecting a busy season on the RV and campground camping front here in Michigan? We are, um, deliveries of RVs are actually positive for the first time in a long time. Um, things are kind of right sizing out, so I expect the dealers to do well this this year. Um, campgrounds are booking out, you know, five, six, seven months at a time. So my recommendation is if you are traveling to Michigan, go to the Marvac website, take a look at the members there, figure out where you want to go and get it booked early. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, it, and you know, at WCM here, we follow a lot of development news as well. How How has the development front been in here in Michigan? Um, are you guys still seeing a lot of interest in building campgrounds here in, in Michigan? always that issue of people have great ideas and beautiful pieces of property that maybe their neighbors don't think is such a great idea um, uh -huh. and we help to bring awareness to those um, smaller communities the the townships small cities so that when developers do come in and want to share camping with people on those properties that we can help them be successful at getting the zonings and things that they need. I would say right now, uh, we have a lot more campgrounds that are expanding than are doing brand new locations, but I wouldn't say that it's exclusively expansions. There's definitely new campgrounds that are coming in each season. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, and I think the roads are improving here in Michigan. So we got that going for us to That's some degree. Right. But summer should there's look a, really good. Yeah, there's a ton of road uh, <laughs> road issues Michigan's had in the past, but we definitely been working on that. So hopefully a smoother ride for the RVs. So um, uh, I think, you know, I guess before we end the show, Maris, how would people learn more information about the vendor showcase? Where would they go? Um, the vendor showcase is available on our website, which is marvac.org, M-A-R-V-A-C.org. Um, you click on members and it will show up right there and the registrations, more information, all of that stuff uh, is there. And then it, the registrations will come back into me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I imagine they can find information on becoming a member there too, as well of Marve. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, Maris, it was great, uh, talking with you and, uh, um, I'm ho hopefully maybe going to be able to make it up there for the, for the vendor showcase. So, and maybe we can get uh, Mike to come up too. You know, it's a little warmer in Michigan this time of year. Too many, so. too many mosquitoes. Yeah, too many mosquitoes. Yeah. 
So, um, uh, happened until a little later in February. So you should be fine. No, I, w- I, w- I would love to go up and see my my friend Howard up at Port here in KOA again. That he's got a beautiful spot up there. That is a great I, spot. I don't think they're open right now, though. No. Not, so yet. He may be, Not yet. He may be do you have patient. some that are that do stay open for yeah. you now? I'm not one that wants to camp in the cold, but <laughs> snowmobilers and skiers, we have quite a few in the upper areas of the state that stay open to accommodate them. Yeah, yeah. I know Scott probably will talk about that yep. when he's uh, talking about it, because I know he has a lot of data on winter camping and how it's growing, and I imagine Michigan could definitely benefit from that. Yeah, so we have a lot of great trails when you get north of Lansing. Yep. So, well, it was great talking with you, Marist, you and um, um, hopefully the show goes well. Hopefully you guys have great weather so people can get to the Detroit show and to the vendor showcase. And um, thanks, everyone, for watching, and we will be back again next week. Thanks, Marist. Thank you for listening to WCM's Park Update, a production of Woodall's Campground Magazine. Join us for a new show each Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn for daily news and updates, and subscribe to our news feed on our website at woodallscm.com. Show hosts are Ben Quiggle and Mike Gast. Executive producers Rick Kessler and Alex Burkett. Copyright 2022, G&G Media Group.